Okay, this video will show the new jigsaw puzzles that I got this past few weeks. Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Around the third week of December, I said that I was going to go on a puzzle buying freeze. No more puzzles, at least until I did it like maybe 30 puzzles. I could try to set like maybe do 10 puzzles and buy one, whatever. That didn't work. So a month ago, January 12th, guess what? I had a puzzle haul video. The end of December, I had a puzzle haul video. And now we are almost at the middle of February. And what do I have? Another puzzle haul video. And let's see, of these puzzles, five of them I got on a puzzle trade group on Facebook. Three I got from Ibu, the company, as review copies, and the rest I got, I believe, just on the Buffalo website. And if I'm wrong, I will correct myself as I tell you about each puzzle. So, I am going to save the best for last, at least my best. Everybody has their preferences. My preference is simply, I'm just moving that boom arm out the way, my preference I don't know. Let's not even, let's pretend I didn't even say that. Let's start with this. Now the shrink wrap is a little messed up, but guess what? I bought this new. Uh, this is a white mountain 1000 piece puzzle called Writer's Desk. It's been on my Facebook wish list forever, forever, but I never bought it. And it came up on Marketplace and it's by Steve Reed, and I think I have from, he, he does white mountain jigsaw puzzles. I have maybe four of his puzzles, and I've done at least two so far. But I love this puzzle, and I'm going to put the image up on the screen. It has two old-fashioned typewriters, and that is what drew me to the puzzle, is the old-fashioned typewriters. You see them? There's one there, and there's one on the shelf right there. So that's what drew me to the puzzle itself. Of course, there's fur babies. There's three. Okay, yeah, there's going to be an image on the screen, but there's three fur babies. Can't fault that. There's a uh, quilt, uh, one of those old-fashioned writing pens, uh, flowers, an outdoor scene. I love this puzzle. I love it. I love it. Um, there's a little an old-fashioned bookshelf there's a globe there's just so many things about this puzzle that appeal to me and now i have it and like i said i got it used or i got it from a reseller but it's string is a little messed up but you can tell it's new so that is my writer's desk puzzle by white mountain now i want to tell you about these white mountain puzzles if you haven't already done them now, it's a 1,000 piece puzzle, as you can see right there, but these are larger pieces, and this is the piece size. Can you see that? That's your piece size. So if you were working on a puzzle table that says it accommodates up to 1,000 pieces, this puzzle will not fit. You need a puzzle surface that will go up to 1,500 pieces because the White Mountain and also, I think the um, Vermont Puzzle Company, the, those puzzle pieces are larger, so their 1,000-piece puzzles are the size of a typical or standard 1,500-piece puzzle. Now, the count on the size on this is 24 by 30, so two feet by nearly three feet. And so, just keep that in mind, depending on if this is going to be your first White Mountain puzzle and what surface you are going to work this on. In fact, I think I'm going to show you my different surfaces that I have here, so we'll do that later. So, okay, let's look at the three Ibu puzzles that I got from the company. And in no particular order, we'll start with this English hedgerow. And again, I will put up uh, an image and the first thing that, first of all, I didn't choose these three Ibu puzzles. They were sent to me by the company for me to review on this channel, which I have. But when I saw this puzzle, the first thing I loved is cows because I don't think in all of the puzzles I've done, I've ever done a puzzle with cows. So that was the first thing that jumped at me. 
but there's also a rooster, a chicken, there's birds, there's a cat, there's a dog, there's a, a greenhouse right here. Um, strawberries, you've got plants. Um, it's just, it's just great. It's great. Got some blueberries right there. Blueberries remind me of when we went to Maine as a kid, we would go maybe like two or three times every summer while I was growing up. And one of the best memories I have of going to Maine was picking blueberries. So this puzzle really appeals to me. It's called English Hedgerow. And one thing about the Ibu puzzles is most of them are location based. So this would be based in the UK because of the title English uh, Hedgerow. Now, there are things about Ibu that I should tell you. One, it says woman owned, mother run. Woman owned, mother run. And it's all recycled materials. Okay, no plastic at all. The cardboard box is recycled. The puzzle pieces are recycled. So they're very environmentally conscious. Conscious. I, I always screw up that word. Now, shows you the piece size, just like I showed you the piece size for the other one. Um, now, Ibu puzzles are kind of, they come in three shapes. They come in round, which I don't have any yet. They come in rectangle but they also come in square. So you see this is 23 by 23 inches square. So the e this particular Ibu puzzle, and I'll let you know when I show you the other two, whether or not they're around the square or rectangle. But what's fun about these puzzles is that every puzzle has a quick little poem. So let's read the poem for this one. Wild profusion in a line, a living fence of shrubs and vine, rampant chaos bringing in order emphatically to every border. So that is the poem for English Hedgerow. Thank you so much, Ibu. My cat's very interested in that loose plastic. I'm gonna show you the one I completed last. We'll leave that one for last. This one here is very similar to a diamond painting I have. Which one is this one? This one is Summer Bouquet. Another gifted puzzle from Ibu and the same thing, it reminds you that it's mother-owned, woman-run, mother-owned, and it's all recycled materials. And they're based in New York City. I know I didn't already say that. This is another square puzzle, 23 by 23 inches square. And it's beautiful. It's called Summer Bouquet, if I haven't already said that. Put your sunflowers, okay? And let's read this poem. It says, bring summer... Let me start that over again. Bring some summer joy indoors. Nature's beauty, make it yours. Your home can be a garden too. You may bloom and breathe anew. Okay? So that is our poem for Summer Bouquet. The next puzzle I got from uh, Ibu, I use this as a voting puzzle. Like I asked a couple of people on a couple of the groups I'm in, which of the three Ibu puzzles do you think I should do? And this is the one that they voted on. It's called Hummingbirds and Gems. And I have a rating system, and this would be number, t I don't know if I'm going to go 10 or 15. 10 would be the most difficult. I'm still working on the system. I don't know if I'm, yeah, anyway. Let's just say that this is so far the most difficult puzzle I have yet to do. Now, other dis difficult puzzles that will come into my purview would be wasage puzzles or wash jig. No, wasage. Wasage puzzles or crypt puzzles. Uh, there's going to be other difficult puzzles, but as of yet, this is the most difficult puzzle. So I'll throw the image up on the screen. So what you see here are several hummingbirds. I think there's four. One, two, three. Um, yeah, there's four hummingbirds, and there's all of these gems, and actually there's five, because there's a tiny, tiny hummingbird right there. There's all of these gems, and it's bright, it's vivid, it's beautiful. It's, it was one of the most enjoyable puzzles, and it is another square puzzle, 23 by 23 inches square, and I loved this one. Yes, it was a challenge. And, but it didn't 
take away any of the joy. In fact, it increased the joy because to me, the bigger the challenge, the more the fun. So the poem, you're startled when a hummingbird hovers as you search for words to name its iridescent hues. Emerald, ruby come to mind. These birds and gems are of a kind, rare and precious, so refined. So that is the poem for hummingbirds and gems from Ibu. So this makes the third Ibu puzzle that I received for review for this channel. Yes, I will do those other two, English Hedgerow and Summer Bouquet. Bet your bottom dollar I'll get those two done. Now let's look at the puzzles that I bought used. I didn't separate them by, there we go. I feel like there's one more. Okay. I think these are the, not, I say used, but they're all new, but I bought secondhand. So these are the four puzzles that I bought on my Facebook group that uh, people offer puzzles for sale or for trade. Now, this one is called, and like I said, they're all new. So when I'm paying for these puzzles, seven, eight dollars a puzzle plus shipping, it's much less expensive than buying them on the Buffalo website. But what you're going to see in the description box below is links to where you can buy all of the puzzles that I'm showing in this video. Now, I found when I was looking up links that some of these puzzles are only sold at Walmart, not on Amazon, not even on the Buffalo website. So they're exclusive to Walmart. So I did get a couple on that Facebook trade group that I would not have gotten, gotten otherwise because this is where I be right here in this house. So this one is Tiki Evening Delight and I will throw up an image. I think every single puzzle I'm showing you today are 1,000 piece puzzles. So Tiki Eve Evening Delight and by the way I'm showing you all of my Amy Stewart puzzles. Um, I was going to save these for last but I guess not. So this is all of her puzzles have this flavor this uh, collage type flavor. My favorite favorite types of puzzles. Favorite favorite types. Now I just did Awesome Alphabet B by Colin Thompson, which was very finely detailed. This won't be as difficult because you have big sections. You know, you have the big orange there. You have a couple of big blue sections. You got your reds and your purples. You got some um, brownish, purplish, whatever over here. So this is going to be a lot of fun. And I've got another Tiki one, but this is the one, like I said, I bought um, from a trade group and I am so happy that I got this one. That's one of my Amy Stewart's. Now I'm showing you the puzzles that I got from the trade group and then you know we'll go from there. This was also something that I've been looking at forever because I'll give you a quick example. I love my new obsession is what? Gradients. Okay. That's a new puzzle, that Ravensburger. This one is going to be hard. It's Cosmic Marbles. Another gradient sort of type of puzzle. I don't know how you want to describe this, but it is going to be a challenge, but it's going to be so much fun. Yes, it's from the Amy Stewart collection. By the way, all of the Buffalo Jigsaw puzzles have posters. Um... I think mostly almost everything I'm showing you has posters. But anyway, Amy Stewart and this one here is just, I'm, I'm going to love it because when I sort this one, you see how I'm going to sort it. I'm going to sort the greens and the oranges, the purples, the blues, the pinks. I, I can't wait to do this one. And I wouldn't have been able to get it if I didn't get it from that Facebook group. Now, I've got other Amy Stewart to show you, but I'm just showing you what I got on the Facebook trade group. Now, I love... Let me show you. I don't want to drop this paper. I love this series by... Let me show you. Oh, it's another gradient one, actually. I love these vivid puzzles from Buffalo. See the vivid collection? The vivid collection? And I think I probably have maybe two more in that collection. So on the Facebook trade group, this one came up. This is called Happy Hour 2. And it's one of their vivid collection puzzles. I had to get it. And as you see, it is 
quite vivid. Now, I'm not someone who imbibes. I mean, I may have a beer maybe like once a year, a wine cooler maybe once a year. I did learn about my, Mike's Hard Lemonade back in August. And if I had access to a grocery uh, liquor store, I probably would get more of that. But generally, I don't drink. But I love this. I love this. And it's got other things on it. It's got some fruit on it. It's it's got other things on it. And it's it looks great. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I love bright, vivid puzzles because they make you go to a happy place. And that's what this puzzle represents to me. Another vivid puzzle, again, all new, even though I got it on a group. And this is called Window Lilies. Okay, and it's not as brightly vivid as the one I just showed you, but it's part of the vivid collection, just as beautiful. And it makes me think of one of my evil puzzles. I wish I knew exactly where it was, but I do have another puzzle that kind of reminds me of this. So, this is from Buffalo, their vivid collection, and it's beautiful. And if you look closely, you notice that it's also got stained glass. So this is going to be a, a lot of fun. I don't envision this being super, super hard, but it might be. Um, I noticed that there's a couple of butterfly hiding in this picture. There's one here and there's one up there. And the lilies are just beautiful. And then there's also roses and other flowers in the picture. So this is in increasing my collection of vivid puzzles by Buffalo. Now, one, two, three, four, five. I bought seven puzzles. Oh, I bought seven puzzles from the Buffalo website, but I also wanted to show you this travel trinkets. This one I got on Amazon. I, it was on sale, and I think it might still be on sale right now. So I love anything collage, anything Amy Stewart. So therefore, I bought this travel trinkets puzzle. Now, this is representative representative of people or someone that travels all over, like New Jersey, New York, Yosemite, Florida, Sun Valley, New Mexico, Atlanta, and Maine. Remember I mentioned Maine, me getting blueberries in Maine? Uh, Las Vegas. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. Washington, D.C. I, I, I don't even know how many places there are on this puzzle. I wouldn't doubt that there's a hundred or more. I, I wouldn't be surprised because not only do you have the front facing pictures, but you have the sideways. Like when we get to Maine, Maine is, is sideways. So dozens and dozens and dozens, if not a hundred one different locations. And I think they're mostly across the United States. I'm trying to see if I see any sites that are outside of the U.S. and I don't. But who knows? Maybe when I do it, I just might. So that is my Amy Stewart travel trinkets that I got on Amazon. Now, Buffalo, which used to be Buffalo Games, had a an email that I got that they had six new Amy Stewart puzzles and another new puzzle. So I bought uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They had five new Amy Stewart puzzles, but there was one I didn't have. So I bought six, but I also bought this one and I'll show you this first and then I'll show you the rest of the Amy Stewart's. This one is called Country Life. Okay. And I had to get this one. It's just beautiful. This, excuse me, it's of the Country Life series, which I wish I could show you. I think I have Four in this series. This is Escape to the Shed. So for the series, you remember I showed you the Vivid series or the Amy Stewart collection? This is the Country Life series. So the name of this one is, is Escape to the Shed. And I just I just had to get it. I just had to. It's just it's just beautiful. And I love Buffalo. Now I want to tell you about Buffalo. They have a an environmentally conscious message on the back of most if not all of their boxes and they show you how they save by not using plastic in fact the puzzles are glued and you just pull it up i just open this side you hear that you just pull it up there's all four sides are glued there's no plastic inside the pieces 
you know, oh, they're not in the bag. Well, you know what? Guess what? They saved 10 million bags by not bagging their jigsaw puzzles. So that's my little environmental message for the day. Now, as mentioned, uh, Amy Stewart had five new jigsaw puzzles and I'm just taking the one that's not new that I didn't have in my collection. Okay. This one is not new, but I didn't have it. So I went ahead and bought it and it's called Tiki Beach Sunset. So I got this directly off of the Buffalo website and wherever it's available to you, I will link it in my description below. This is going to be a challenge. Just this, this section right here, that's going to be a challenge. I can see myself getting the rest of it done really, rather easily. And then when I get to that middle section, it's going to be very interesting. So it's got some tiki mass in there. And it, it's just very, very uh, island type uh, enthused puzzle. And I just, I had to get it when I was on the Buffalo website. Now, just like I showed you that this is a new Buffalo puzzle right here, this country life um, escape to the shed puzzle. These five are brand new Amy Stewart puzzles. There was no way I could say I want one or two, well, maybe three. Nope, I had to get all five. This one is called My Awesome Collection 1989. Okay, look at all of those things. Okay, so I'll throw the picture up here so I can talk to you about the puzzle. So quite naturally, you see the number 89 in the middle. And then you have all kinds of things that might have been popular in 89. And now in 1989, I was 18 years old. So I, of course, remember 1989. What was I doing in 1989? I was actually working at Chicago Title and Trust Company in the city of Chicago. Um, so that's what I was doing in 1989. Um, do you remember in school you had these little pencil boxes full of stuff? Yeah, you would put a lot more than pencils in that box. So that's kind of cute. So this is just an adorable puzzle. I, I just had to get it. I had to, I had to. No, I was not in high school in 1989. I graduated in 1978, but nonetheless, I graduated in 78. I don't know. In 1989, I was older. 1989, I think I had a kid or two kids, maybe three kids. I'm getting my years confused. And I'll tell you why. There's another puzzle here that will explain that little bit of confusion. When I get to that puzzle, I can rectify that. So I was not in school in 1989, but I had to get this puzzle. So forgive that blubber, but you'll see why when I get to it. It's right here. Blanket Fort, 1979. 1979, I was working at Chicago Title and Trust Company. By 1989, I think I had my fourth child because I had 80 children in 84, 85, 87, and 89. So this is when I'm thinking about my one of my first jobs during this year. Why am I saying that? Again, Blanket Fort, 1979. So please let me uh, remedy that boo boo. Now, I didn't really make blanket forts when I was a kid, but I know how much kids love them. They're always fun. And this one, again, is it's just so vivid. It's not like a collage of true nature of Amy Stewart, but still has a lot of elements in it. And so I had to get it. And one thing I love about this one is Chinese checkers. I taught my grandsons how to play that. There's checkers in this game. I, I'm surprised I don't see backgammon, but that's okay. Um, there's crochet, uh, an afghan there, or a pillow. Maybe it's a, just a folded afghan. It's just a fun, it will be a very, very enjoyable, bright, vivid Amy Stewart puzzle. One of her newest ones. Now, I'm going to save the, the other one. For, I'm going to save the one I just had for last because it's going to be my next puzzle. This is Breakfast in Bed. Now, take a look at that one. Okay, I'll throw the image up on the screen. 
for breakfast in bed, obviously you have a breakfast tray with a bunch of breakfast foods, but you have two little kitties that are sleeping. You have a word search, you have a diary, and it's just another bright, vivid Amy Stewart brand new jigsaw puzzle. So I had to get that. Like I said, I couldn't choose. I couldn't say no. Now, look at this one. Backstage at the theater. This is going to be a fun, fun, fun challenge. You've got all the different theater costumes. You've got the wigs. You've got tickets. You've got the uh, place where you sit down and put your makeup on and you get your hair done and you got props. I've never been to the theater, but if I ever went to the theater and I went backstage, I imagine I'd see this one. So that is Backstage at the Theater by Amy Seward. Now, this is the last puzzle for this haul, and it is going to be the next puzzle that I do. And this one is called Gets You Cute. Now, I just did a puzzle, and I believe it was an Amy Stewart called Gets You Kittens. Um, and I should have checked to see if it was Amy Stewart. I should have even pulled it out. So I love this one, and it's going to be, my, like I said, my next puzzle. This one is just, it's just too cute for words. Not only do you have some bright and funny little kittens in this puzzle, but you have cute little dolls. You have a cute little deer. You have just owls and all kinds of interesting, bright, vivid things that make me want to do this puzzle next. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to be diamond painting this afternoon, so I probably won't start this till tonight, maybe even tomorrow. But I just had to do it. And now that I'm looking closer at it, I only see one kitten in there. I thought there might be two. But there's lots of other little funny creatures in there. There's a little deer. There's um, some kind of fish. Um, just little things. I, I don't even know what the meaning of the word kitschy is, and I'm going to look it up when I get ready to do this puzzle. Two hours right in the middle. It says, I love kitsch. So I don't know why this appeals to me, but it does, and that's why I have picked it for my next puzzle. So that is my puzzle haul. And let's see if I can show you what I've done without toppling it over. There they are. There they all are, okay? So I got to hurry up and move them before my cats knock them over. But I just wanted to show you this haul because I didn't think I'd be buying more. But how can you say no? In fact, there are four puzzles sitting on that trade group that I kind of want. And I might buy them today. So you might see another haul in a few more weeks. So... That's it for now. Alrighty, the last part of this video is a slideshow of all of the puzzles that I have shown you. And I also wanted to mention that in the comment section, I'm going to pin a comment that will show all the links to all of the puzzles. That way, if you're interested in purchasing any of them, especially since they're not all available at Amazon or they're not all available at this location or that location, all of the links are valid and hopefully you'll be able to get these puzzles yourself. For now, enjoy the rest of the video. Thank you for watching and I will be back with more. Bye-bye.